Ali Admat. First of all, thank you for hosting me. It's, it's a real pleasure. I uh, mainly lecture in Israel and I teach uh, managers here, but uh, I'm always happy to speak with people and from the community and people who are, you know, totally interested in tech. So um, um, I'll just jump in and uh, how long do I have to speak? Uh, what? Uh, we have an hour. Um, I'd, I'd like to leave some time for Q&A. Yeah. So, yeah. So like 45 minutes or That's what? That's perfect. Okay, great. So um, what is interesting is that we're talking right now about the future and there are a few things that I think we should know about the future. First of all, it's not written yet, which is the best thing to say about that. And because all of you here are people with certain, I would say, education and power and position, meaning you are also capable of being part of the group who is writing the future, which is also very good. Uh, the last thing we should know about the future that he says nothing to do it's very, very different than today and from yesterday. Um, so I think we have a huge responsibility. Right now we're in a crossroad as human race. And uh, we should look, if we want really to relate to this, to this opportunity, and I think it's a huge opportunity, I think the best thing to do is first of all to go and look at the past and how we created the past. And if we are talking about the past, I would like to take us just for a second to the beginning and I wanna, I'm going to do it very quickly. I'm going to show, this is a, show, this is a uh, film of uh, Sagan who created the evolution. He's, uh, you know, explaining the evolution. I just want to show it to you very, very quickly. Well, the first two phases, the, the first phases took a long, long time. But from the time that we got to here, it was very quick until we got to this, to the human race. So, and this is the, this is the law of what we call of every kind of, um, of system, of complex system. Uh, I, I didn't say complicated, I said co complex, and I think there is a difference. And this is a law that uh, was created by Ray Kurzweil, and he's talking about the accelerating return, meaning that because the evolution uh, process is, uh, is, you know, he has, his, it's, he has his power of it on. What he's doing is that he's taking the best practices, you know, elevate them and then use them to create and to excel the, 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 the I would say the level and the continuous of, of, the, of the acceleration itself. And I want to take this, this is a system of any kind of complex, uh, this is a law of any kind of complex system and it starts with nature. And what he did, which was very interesting, he took and looked at it, how does it appear when we um, look through these lenses of the progression of technology? And this is how it looks. You see, it took us a long, long time to go from the beginning until we got to the writing and reading and mathematics. And then, look at what's happening then, from there on, how quickly it goes. So we adopt the best mechanism, we if we prove them and we use them to create again another acceleration in the technology so i think it's a very very important notion to see how the how the past looked like and this is also what the, another thing he did you know you probably all everybody know uh, gordon moore, moore and, and moore's law larry they know that i don't have to speak about that we actually use this exact chart that's on okay, the, the left. Great. Yeah. Yeah. So, no, no, so I'm going. Okay. So what I want to say right now before we jump in is that right now we are here. I mean, we talked about, probably you talked about deception growth, so I won't go there. But in the coming 10 years, we are going to find themselves, ourselves either in a chaos or an amazement. And I think we need to take into consideration that the, in the coming 10 years, the amount of changes are going to exceed what we had in the last 10, uh, one, uh, one, 100 years. So it's going to be all over us. So uh, I think there is going to be a flow of, of innovation coming. So I think this is where we are standing right now. And I think when we, when we had this uh, humble you know, iPhone, I don't think that any of us, at least you know, the one who are grown up enough to, to, feel, to remember the feeling how it was to hold the first uh, iPhone, well, we thought we we're going to be more efficient, we we're going to get on the internet, wow. But none of us ever thought that this small, you know, device is going to change everything from technology to uh, politics to so social issues and so forth. 
So I think we should take that into consideration. I'm tr I'm, I will try to run a little bit because I want to continue and to get into Gutenberg moment. The concept of Gutenberg moment, if I'm speaking too, too quickly, please let me know. The, the notion or the, 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 I think the frame of thinking of Gutenberg moment was created by one of my teacher in Singularity University called Salim Ismail. And what he means that this is a day that it's not that the, um, the, the rules of the, of the game are changing, but I would say that the surface that we are playing on is changing. So everything is in a process of changing. And this is what happened with Gutenberg created the, the, you know, the pressing machine. It was between uh, 1440 and 1450 and everything changed, you know. And I want to show you how does it look uh, in real life to see how does it look at Gutenberg moment, how does it feel. This happened in ancient history for us, which is 2011, okay, when Watson, you know, he beat the two champions of Jeopardy. And, uh, and this was the first time that it, that it, you know, it took us all by surprise. I want to go and speak for a second about another Gutenberg moment that happened in 2016. And this is the Go. Do you know Go? Do, do, are you familiar with the, with, the, with the game? I am very familiar. I have never played, but I've, I've known of it. I'm a, 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 a involved in Chinese philosophy since I was a teenager. So um, okay, to, to my students, what, this, yeah. I'd like to uh, bring something up about this. Uh, I've also yeah. played chess since I was on the chess team in school and stuff like that. Now, mm. when you look at complexity, the game of chess starts out fairly complex. Each piece can do a bunch of different moves. And with each passing move, a, a piece is removed. And it gets more simple as the game goes on. Go, uh, at its most basic level, has uh, this grid of 19 by 19. And think of a, uh, each of these pieces, each of these uh, grids can be not just zero or one, as we do in binary math, as we, and, and we have to do a lot of uh, exponentials uh, training for that. But this doesn't just ex exponential by two. It could be there's nothing on there, or there's a, a black or a white. So that already, just looking at one thing, is now more like quantum computing, which is either uh, a zero or one or in both states. So you, this really uh, exponential is much faster than a two to the n. This is at least uh, four to the n, and, and, that's a, and it's a 19 by 19 grid. The amount of combinations here is greater than the number of atoms in the known universe. So it's one thing to train a computer to play chess, and that, that was one Gutenberg moment I didn't see there, is when they beat Gaspar, uh, the first, and I believe that was deep. Yeah, 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 yeah because I, I'm trying to, yeah. You're oh, and about. I appreciate that, and I appreciate it, but I, I wanna help, I, I'm, one, yeah. I'm loving your talk, so I don't wanna interrupt too much. But no, 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 the game it. of Go gets more complex because you keep adding pieces. So it's the opposite of chess. It starts out at a simple level, but gets increasingly more complex as the game goes on to the point where you cannot program. I could program a computer to have all the possible, there's enough storage, all the possible chess moves. You can't program a computer to have all the possible Go moves. They have to work at a certain point with intuition. So it was pretty bizarre. And that's why they always thought only humans could do this. Uh, and she's going to get to, uh, Yali's going to point this out, but it was no, no, it's moment. wonderful, it's wonderful, it's okay. It's it's a huge moment. So I had already told them about Dr. Kai Fu Lee, and I'll leave it at this. Kai Fu Lee okay, pointed out that no, okay. he's a great wonderful. AI guy <laughs> from China, and he pointed out that China wasn't paying attention to AI until this yeah. moment. When this so happened, if you about that, it's okay. I don't know. So I, I want I, because I want to continue. Wonderful. Yeah. So you know about Kai Fu Lee, and you know about the two powers, and great. So just to give an idea how how you know what's the impact you know because it changed the world it's not only the chinese that you know the perception change and you know we're talking about two powers so you know so i'm continuing please okay um so i'm gonna run into i want to continue from here and i want to start with you know because we don't have too much time and talk about some gutenberg moment we are going to experience shortly so i think it's always breathtaking to look at that right Am I right? It's amazing, you know. It's you know, you you can't avoid smiling when you look at it. But in my opinion, much more interesting is this one. You see 
how precise is the lending it's amazing and you could have thought you know how many years you know this guy had to work on it and to practice well this is not this is an ai doing it okay and this is a huge change we will never ever let anyone including you know anyone you can think even not the heroes from uh, star trek to lend a rocket like this we simply won't let him and this is the reason that why we have reusable uh rockets and we can you know and we can really conquer the space because because of this so this is just an example of what ai is doing for us right now okay and i want to Okay, anyone knows what this is? Anyone knows? Okay, this I, is... Yeah, I know it's typing anything. What is it? This is Tesla. Ah. Uh, even Musk. <laughs> he gets one morning and he says, Oh, I don't like my car. I, it, it should, you know, start within a second and get to 200 miles. This is what I want. So what he does... He uh, calls his engineers and says, please, can you create an app? And all the owners of, of Tesla are getting one morning. And, you know, with the notion, you know, there is a message on their iPhones or whatever. Hey, uh, just, you know, plug in and you have this insane mode. Just think, what does it mean? It means that we used to think about cars as, you know, physical things. But... If you can really upgrade your car, and I will talk in a second about the economics of it, but by simply sending you an app. So it's not, you know, the old way where we could have said, okay, BMW and so forth, what they're doing right now, they're, they're saying we have a legacy, we want to keep it, so we're going to take this wonderful knowledge we have about how we make a car, and we, add, we will add to that a computer, and everything is going to be smooth and wonderful, and the, the, uh, the uh, technology com companies are saying, we will put, you know, let's take a computer and let's add some wheels and let's see what happens. But then if this is what can be done, as one of the pupils of Salim said in one of the lectures, he raised his head and says, no, no, no. If this is what Elon Musk can do, if Tesla can do that, well, it means that a car today is an apps on wheels. So this is a kind of a Gutenberg moment because you can never ever look at a car again and think, you know, in the same way you thought about it. So I think this is just this mind shifting, you know, mind shift that we should take into consideration. I won't go too deep into the AI, but I want to just mention two things. I think we should look at this AI as the new electricity. We are going to cognify everything and this is the the kevin kelly who is you know the chief editor of wired is saying we are going to add everything and think about it how was it 120 years ago when we started the electricity and what companies did companies were created simply by the fact that they took everything and added electricity to it doesn't matter it was a lamp it was air conditioning whatever uh, whatever fan they simply added electricity so in the coming 10 years, we're going to see a boom of companies that all they're going to do, they're going to add AI to anything. Just bear in mind that in, in 2023, everything that is beyond $5, okay, that's going to cost with beyond $5, is going to have sensors in it, everything. So it's going to be always a collecting of that, collection of data, collecting of data all the time, and someone has to do something with this data. So this is one thing. The other thing is we are going to crave AI, okay? I just want to give you a small example of what we're going to do with AI. Do you have this sometimes this situation that you're sitting in the room and it's cold or you're thirsty and you're going to the other room and you want to either find a sweater or, you know, pour yourself a glass of water and, and you get there and it says, what do I want? 
I forget what I want. And then you're getting worried, you know, perhaps I'm getting old, you know. <laughs> <laughs> That's the secret. I, I won't yeah, say yeah. I have a funny <laughs> yeah, story think, about that. Yeah, yeah. You think I'm forgetting things, you know what I mean? <laughs> it's not. It's what we call, it's our working memory. Our work, working memory is designed to be very effective, very efficient in a very short term. So when you go to the other room, we call it the doorway effect. Meaning you got into another room, your brain is telling itself, well, this is something else. I we lost you there for a second. Yali, no, no. Guys, while we're waiting for her, that's very appropriate to what we're talking about. We're, we're going to talk about how the CPU uses uh, short-term and long-term memory. And that's, that, that was the purpose of virtual memory. That, remember, it was supposed to be volatile. So she, what she's saying is it was volatile um, by the time you walk through the doorway. Oh, I hope she gets back here. Can you guys hear me? Yeah, okay. Yeah, so that's interesting. Well, well, wait, hopefully she gets back here. Um, yeah, it was supposed to be volatile. And when you walk through the doorway, it was volatile. Um, but the... Um, uh, the thing that was that made me laugh was there's an old uh, joke about Alzheimer's and uh, you've got short-term memory and long-term memory and in Alzheimer's your short-term memory gets uh, worse but your long-term memory actually gets better so the guy says for instance on that walk to the refrigerator um, the the first sign of Alzheimer's is that your your long-term memory gets better you're going to notice uh, on the way there, you're going to remember detailed things that happened to you when you were like three years old. The, the downside is your, um, your short-term memory gets worse. By the time you get to the refrigerator, you forgot why you were there. And I don't remember what the third sign is. And someone says, well, you said there was four signs. I don't give a damn about the fourth sign. So that's the story of the four types of, uh, the four signs of Alzheimer's. The first one, long-term memory gets better. The second one, short-term memory gets worse. I'm I forget sorry. what the third one is, and I don't give a damn what the fourth term. <laughs> <laughs> I was just buying time while you were coming back there. So. No, no, no. Yeah, I'm so sorry. I don't know what happened. I do apologize for that. Well, you're um, coming remotely in. It's, it's, uh, it's okay. The world, you know, this <laughs> technology is not perfect yet. So, yeah, yeah. but hopefully but I tap dance enough for you and kept them busy. All right, thank you. I'm glad you're back. No, 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 no worries. Where did, where did you stop hearing me? Uh, you were talking about the doorway effect. So as you walk through the, the room, your, your, yeah. your short-term memory was supposed to be good for, for just that brief moment. There. Yeah, yeah. So I'm just telling, I'm sorry. So well, I, I continue talking for a while then to myself. What I was saying is that right now we have a stripe that you can put on your head for about, you know, a band that you put a stripe on your head for like 10 minutes a day. And it's going to improve your short term memory uh, between 15 to 20 percent, which is going to convert to uh, augmenting your financial or improving your uh, financial situation or ability at the same rate. Would you buy it to yourself or to your children? I would, would yeah. You? yeah, for myself at least. Yeah, so this is what's going to happen. So we are going to crave AI. Ray Kurzweil is, is speaking about the fact that we are going to have biological uh, intelligent and we are going to have synthetic intelligent, all of us, all of us. So, um, you know, before you go into an exam, we are going to say, well, I need this or I need to remember everything. So you upload your mind, your brain. This you is know, gonna you happen. just gave me an idea because these people, my students have to take an exam. At, what's the price in the exam these days? Like $800 now? And they check them for, they, they make sure they don't bring their phone in there. Now we're yeah. going to have in, in Ray Kurzweil's mind, and, and what Yali is saying is something I just love so much. It's not like us versus the machines. It's us and the machines yeah. together. And he sees that we'll have, you know, just like you, you uh, swallow a, um, we, have digest, we have ingestible computing. So you can ingest yeah. this computer, it's connected to the internet, to the cloud, and you can remember the Library of Congress like you would remember your own phone number. It's more, it's even today, you know, our phones are, are a part of our brain. I mean, if you ask yourself, if you're going out of the home and you have to forget something, would it be your um, wallet or your cell phone? You will never forget your cell phone. 
you you met you prefer to, to even if you have to choose you will prefer to lose you know to leave at home your your wallet am i right you're naked without your phone you're just no there's no way i'm getting through my day <laughs> it's worse than naked you're w without your head <laughs> you're walking headless people are going to be fearful of you where is where is this guy with no head so okay <laughs> i want to continue to the second gutenberg moment we are talking about and this is the price of electricity. Sorry that it's in Hebrew, but you can understand the idea. And what we should take into consideration that we are before the first time in history in the coming 10 years, that there is going to be abundance of energy. We never, never in the history of human race been in such situation. Most of the war, especially the United States one, sorry, Israeli have, you know, other issues that they are fighting on, forget about that, we won't go into politics, but most of our wars worldwide are because of energy. And just to give you an idea, what am I talking about? In 88 minutes, okay, the amount of energy that falls, you know, from the sun on earth is about the amount of the whole, the all, the all energy that we consume as human race in a year. In 122 hours, the amount of energy that is falling on Earth from the sun is similar to all the energy that we have in all the forms that we are, you know, from oil to uh, coil, whatever, coal, whatever you're thinking of, whatever kind of method. Meaning the only problem that we had is how can we capture it and how can we store it? So how to capture it, we already got there. And the issue of, of storing it, though, there, there was an, an enormous investment these days in, in energy storage. And what I understand as we are going to get to the tipping point of, you know, moving from scarcity to uh, abundance, like between four to seven years. But even today, just to give you an idea, uh, China closed last year 140 coal mines that were supposed to be starting operating. And she said it's going to be cheaper to use, to use energy from the sun, okay? Instead, instead reusable energy and not, and not, and not the, these coal mines. And Chile, for example, yeah, and, and we see country after country moving uh, to solar energy, and even you know, it, um, Chile, for example, already creates third more than they, they need, so they you know simply give it to the neighbors as, as a present. And I don't know whether Facebook, Facebook also is a huge continent. <laughs> if it would have been a country, it would have been the biggest one, more than China and India together combined. They are only using we uh, uh, you know um, uh, you know solar energy. So just to give an idea, and now we're getting to the situation when it's cheaper. You know, um, in the last 40 years, uh, the price for solar energy dropped 250 times. The first 200 weren't that important because still oil was cheaper. But the last, 20 the last 50 times, it got so cheap that you, now you can get uh, one kilowatt uh, from solar uh, energy, then less than two cents. It's amazing. It's amazing. And what was interesting is that in the beginning of, the, of, of this uh, century, uh, it was very interesting, the um, Ministry of Oil in, I think, Abu Dhabi came to the Prime Minister and says, listen, we should prepare ourselves to uh, the crisis. People won't use oil anymore. He says, come on, petrol or whatever. He says, how come? And he says, listen, the age stone didn't finish, didn't end because there was a lack of stones around and rockets around. So it's, a, it's, it's going to have huge implication. But I'm very happy because when we are talking about taking care of the less fortunate, we should always say, take, take, take in consideration that the sunniest uh, countries on earth are usually the poorest. So perhaps at last we can take care of them. I'm just jumping ahead because, uh, you know, um, and we I go a little longer because I'm, I'm really fascinated by this stuff. And I wanted to uh, say for my class, yeah. too, um, uh, 
the what you're talking about in solar uh, and and compared to to coal um yeah. a statistic i heard recently and i think it was at a singularity university uh, talk uh, given by um uh ramez nam yeah he's great he's great yeah yeah he's he's, he's, that, he's a wonderful person that the he's cost a- of operating just your operational expense. This is very testable for us because we have to know the difference between, uh, uh, you know, our uh, capital expenditures and our operational yeah. expenses. The operational expense of running a coal uh, uh, power plant is higher than the capital investment to build a new solar. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's just we are really going from deceptive to disruptive in this field. So totally. Fantastic. Totally. I want to show you something, just a film regarding that, because it's not going usually what you're saying, you know, you create a a kind of technology and it's only for the richer and to, you know, the privileged one. So I want to show you a film that was presented last year by Ikea and all of us, you know, in middle class, we buy in Ikea. Um, And I want to show you what, what they're saying. change is a reality. We see that we are already on a 1 2 degree centigrade uh, increase in uh, global temperature. And with that, I think it's clear that a company like ours needs to be part of uh, finding the solution. The energy of the future is going to be about millions of homes making energy, not big coal-fired power stations. We would like to be part of the solution because we know that if we roll up our sleeves, we can have a positive impact on people and on the planet. We've said that by 2020, we would like to produce the same amount of energy as uh, people like here consume. It would be uh, cool, I think. I'm very proud to be part uh, of uh, co-leading that agenda together with my 160,000 colleagues. We see that the IKEA brand is... Okay, I'll just finish here. I'll just... Uh... I'm just saying that for me, energy, and this is what Nam Ramez is teaching us, is, uh, is a moral issue. It's a moral issue. Because once you can take care of, 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 you know, of everybody to have electricity, think about it, what a huge change it is. I don't know whether you're aware of it, but we still have 2.5, people, 2.5 million people who, who don't have electricity worldwide. It's an amazing situation. It's horrible. So I'm just saying. You know, I, I, even in my lifetime, when you think about, you know, we get spoiled and we, do, we don't think about the rest of the world sometimes. I, I remember in my lifetime, when we, and I think it was in the 90s, when we crossed from 50% literacy rate. And I was like, you're kidding yeah. me. And at that point, then someone else said, yeah, but that doesn't mean that we have 50% of the people have running water. And I said, you're, you mean more people can read than actually have a flushing toilet? Oh, yeah. And now yeah, you, they, well, I, they have yeah, cell phones. I don't know where they yeah. You know, we still have right now every year um half a million of people dying from drinking um bad water dirty water and we still have like three million people who don't have access to um to clean water and what is happening now because we're so well progressing with uh, the technologies that are dealing with uh, energy with solar energy and we created this thin thread that you can store energy in it and it's, it's so thin, it's thinner than my hair. And you, if you even put it on a bubble of soup, it, the, the bubble won't be crashed. So we have now these three women, young women, you've never heard them, of them, they've never worked in Amazon, Facebook, whatever. And they took their mission to make sure that no one ever dies from dirty water. And they created this company called, called Magic Water. It's coming out of Singularity. They had the proof of concept in, um, I think it was uh, July or whatever, in 2016. And they created something that really looked, you know, very, very basic. But it gives them the ability, because they're off-grid, to make sure that even the poorest people on earth, meaning the people who are living under, uh, with $2.5, can have water because they can create with the sun it's amazing, from air, from thin air, they can create a liter of water for less than two cents. 
They're yes. running now an experiment in Kenya. Yeah, I believe I saw to... something on that as well. Yeah, I th- probably in the group. It's amazing. So I'm just, you know, okay, that's it. So I'm just go, I'm just going to show you. These are the ladies. Amazing, huh? No one knows them. I wish. I hope they're going to be successful, and I think they deserve a Nobel Prize if they do. You know, just you know, think about the feeling getting every morning and saying, "Well, I saved." You know, half a million a year. What can you say? So this is, you see, this is it's off grid. It's wonderful, huh? And I love the fact that they only use things that can be, you know, materials and and uh, whatever that they can find also in very remote places. So they're doing now that the experiment in Kenya. So I'm running. Should, should they continue? It's okay. Absolutely. Larry? Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Keep going. Okay, I'm going now to the third Gutenberg moment. I'm going to go from this very quickly because you're probably aware of it. I want to talk first of all that, you know, um, the communication is available to everybody. Okay. And what we see is the adoption of the smartphone. But I think what is very interesting regarding that is that you talked about illiteracy. And I think this is going to assist us with dealing with the, uh, with the illiteracy because what is happening, what's going to happen right now, because we are deploying now the 5G network. And it means that you can have internet all over the world, meaning the big companies would like you to have a smartphone so they can sell you things. And more than that, of course, they want your data because this is the new world, right? So once they are giving this, we are right now running an exper- experiment with XPRIZE um, to find a solution, that uh, a software that will assist every child from the age of six till the age of 18 to learn writing, reading, and mathematics in 18 months. So uh, probably the winner is going to be announced by the end of this year. Um, So, okay, so this is where we're going. This is deployment. And what is very interesting is that they are going to leapfrog because we are talking right now about no less than 4 billion new minds that are going to come online in the coming five years. And who knows what they want to know, what they want to create. They're probably going to come online with huge hunger. hunger, And they are going to leapfrog because they won't go all the process that we did, you know, level after level. So this is what, for example, we see in, 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 um, in China, you know, when they had only 7% they were middle class. It was, uh, I think, 2005 and 2015. We are talking about 51. And they use WeChat. They don't have credit cards. They don't use any kind of any kind of mean other financial, but they're doing everything. So this is not even not it's not even a platform. It's an ecosystem. And these four billion people, they are either your clients or the clients of your clients. So I think you should take it into consideration. I want to just speak for one second about uh, our lost Einstein because I know everybody can uh, hear our parents. So uh, we are really care about children, but. Unfortunately, we want to care about our children before anything else because, you know, this is us and it's human. But uh, what was the, there was a very interesting paper came out of Stanford, I think two years ago, called Our Lost Einsteins. And they were trying to put a, an economic price on the fact that the, our system are not taking good, well, uh, well enough care, good enough care about all the children. And it seems that when we are talking in the United States and you have a wonderful economics uh, system, but still it would add $1.5 billion to your GDP. To South Africa, it would add 60%. And to India, where we have a huge problem with children, it's going to add 110%. So once we are going to deploy this system, we're going to take care of uh, education much better. So I think we should take this in consideration as well. Is it okay? Can I... Oh, no, this is wonderful, wonderful. And, and I, I can't agree more. I, I would just think of, you know, um, you, you mix chatbots, your, your Siri, your, your Alexa stuff. You give them to the cell phones of these 4 billion new people online. Children yeah. now have an AI uh, assistant that's like Alfred or, or, yeah. or uh, you know, that's going to help them along with their homework. And, and, yeah. and they're going to be able to then communicate wonderful ideas, things that we never thought of before. The, the totally. world has never been as good as it is now, and it's only getting better. Yeah. I want to talk just for a second about the issue of uh, um, um, information. So uh, you see in the chart that this is the amount of uh, devices that are going to be connected. And what was interesting is that Ericsson, uh, two years ago, 
uh, presented this uh, slide, this projection, and it was written 50 million, not 500 million. I'm sorry, it's in Hebrew. <laughs> I'm just explaining. And so what, what does it mean? It means that we are going to have sensors all over. And just to give you an idea, we created in the last five years more information that we created in the, five, in the last 500 years, but we were capable of analyzing only uh, point, uh, half, half a percent of it. We must understand that we are in, I wouldn't say in, a, in, a, in information crisis, but this is, but it's, it's evaluating, it's getting up very, very quickly very very quickly and it's going as well to change everything because just to give you an idea when we are talking about medicine the amount the, the level of knowledge within medicine used to change every 50 years do you have any idea how quick it goes today my wife's in pharmaceuticals i i, I gotta imagine that it changes uh, every day <laughs> 77 days so it puts a huge question about how we train our doctors. Most of the information they're studying right now is going to be totally irrelevant. And why do you have for seven years and so forth? And I think two months ago, uh, the president of Harvard went out with a very interesting announcement that, that he thinks that most of his students will go out and the information that they're going to study is going to be irrelevant once they're finishing the study. And just let us remind, this is, a, you know, this is the top Ivy League. It's very, very interesting. So it's not only the accumulation of knowledge, it's that the fact that you have to, you know, it's, you have to take some information, it's totally irrelevant because it's inaccurate because we know much better. So there is an issue right now, not only of learning, but of unlearning. And the concept of unlearning is going to be crucial because you have to, you know, take something out in order to take to put new information and perhaps then you can uh, you know ass assess whether what information you should keep and then just reframe it into the new concept of a context that you have right now so this is it, because what is happening we all all of us are all suffering from what we call educated incapacity meaning we know too much about something it, it, so we can't really learn so it goes beyond the issue of information is uh, the way we understand the world on to, on, based on that information. Um, okay, I know I need to finish right now because I have two minutes. Is it okay? I'm just, you know, uh, I see the clock I, right I, now. You know, yeah, I, I wouldn't mind. I'm sure my, we have time to, to be a little flexible. I'm, I'm too much enjoying okay. it. So, yeah. <laughs> oh, you're too kind. So it's okay. I, I can go on into the next one. Okay, great. Okay, wonderful. Okay, so this is something very interesting. Um, I don't know whether you are aware of that. Do you know what is teraflop? Teraflop means um, billion calculation in a second. And we thought we would never be able to create, you know, you know any kind of uh, machine or computer that can do that. So, well, what do you know? We had the first one, it was 1997, and it cost, of course, you know, $55 million, but, Look at it, what happened a few years later. Unbelievable. 1,000, meaning very soon it's going to be in your pocket, of course. But this is again one teraflop, which is very, very quick. But our mind is capable of doing one, one, um, one teraflop, I mean, sorry, billion teraflop in one second, meaning billion, billion calculation. Unbelievable, huh? Unbelievable. Just to give you, just to give a hint, uh, most of it is being done is in the subconscious, not in the conscious. I'm just, you know, this is something else that, this has to do with brain t learning, uh, you know, uh, science and so forth. But I wanna say something, so this is, so, but I wanna explain something. So right now, we are heading to a point that, we are going to have a computer which is, will be able to do billion of billion teraflop in a second. It's unbelievable. It's, it's, it's amazing. So this is, I'm just telling you, put this aside. Now I'm going to go one for one second into what we call internet point three. So if this is the first part of, of what I'm going to explain now. So we had internet 
you know, uh, phase one, the internet point one, which was mainly dealing with data statistics and so forth. Then we went into uh, internet uh, point two, which we had the Skype, we had Facebook, and so this is where we are living right now. In the coming three years, Cook, who is the president or I think, uh, of, of uh, Apple, is talking about the fact that we are going to start right now, we are, we are entering a new era, which we call internet point three. I'm gonna show you how it looks. The, get, the, the barriers between uh, what is uh, virtual and reality are going totally to be blurred. Larry, I'm just putting, I'm just letting you know that uh, uh, Peter wrote, I think, three, uh, three, three letters about that. And on top of it, he had a wonderful discussion with Kevin Cayley about that. I'm just letting you know. So I, I saw it. that. I saw that. It was fantastic. And, and that's all. In fact, you and I, uh, Yali and I, were planning to do this in virtual reality. Uh, but the Rumi uh, application I use is undergoing a major upgrade, and it just wasn't practical right now. Uh, and also the hardware is just getting to us this year. Um, but it's amazing. It's, and it's like uh, I showed my or told to my students about um, – the, I don't know if you've seen this where they show a photograph of uh, New York City at Times Square in uh, 1905 yeah, yeah. and you see yeah. one car and a whole bunch of horse and buggies and 1915 when it's all cars except for one horse and buggy and the actual break even point was uh, 1912 and uh, yeah. I think we're right there we're right at the rolling car but it's not going to be 10 yeah. years necessarily and I should, uh, Yali's doing 10 years but it's th th there's going to be huge huge changes and I'm, 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 I'm with you I think that the, the that the world of uh, 2030 will be as different as today, as today is from ancient Rome. Yeah. I think we should think about that as we talked about. I, I heard a very interesting conversation from Benedict from Horowitz. And uh, so, um, so he was speaking about the fact that it's like we should relate to that as if we are right now. It's uh, like uh, uh, 2006 before, before we got the iPhone in, 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 the, in, yeah, in many senses. Uh, so I just want to say, we are going to get now to a situation when we are going to have computing at the speed of thought. And what does it mean? Okay, we are going to, take, so this is the first thing. So we're going to have computers which are very strong. We are going to have 5G, which is crucial. This is the other component. And the third thing, we are going to take the screens and we are going to put them on our heads. Think about, you know, having glasses. We won't have the, we won't have them here, but we're simply going to put them here. So it's suddenly going to make us superheroes. We are going to get powers what we never, never thought we are going to have. I'm going to show you. So really technology is going to become an extension of ourselves. Okay. I won't get into it. I just want to go. I want to show you here. So I'm going to show you how it's going to look. I'm going to explain what we're going to see. We're going to see, a, this is a fire woman, and she put on her Google or whatever glasses, and then she get an additional ability of sight, which is infrared sight. So when she gets into a, a home, you know, which is on fire, burning, she can foresee what's going to happen. So I'm going to show you what's going to happen here. Look at it. We call it the extended revolution, extended reality revolution. You see, suddenly she can see, and the minute she sees where the light is coming, you see this red, because her glasses are also connected to AI, it's already giving in a warning to her friends which are on the other side of the building. Be cautious. The, the fire is here, okay? It's unbelievable. Look at it. That we are going to, so yeah, cool. it's unbelievable. I want to show you a few more things regarding that. I want to explain for a second. I know we don't have too much time, but this is very important and you're going to love it. So, you see, if you put your hand here on your head, just to have a, just to have a feeling, this, all of it, is the part in our head, in our mind, which is in charge of sight. What we found out lately, that all the senses that we have, all of them, are being 
uh, um, transform or they, they are getting through the, sun, the tunnel of the sight. Whatever you, you hear, uh, you smell, um, you eat, you, you, you taste, all of it, everything in the end, this is the system, it goes through the sites. What is um, about 66, I think 86% of what we feel, uh, we sense, it goes through the, through the site, um, uh, our site's abilities uh, or whatever. What is interesting is the same is for blind people. Even though they're not seeing, it's amazing. It's the same structure. So what, what does it mean? The minute that we are going to use, we are putting here the computer, meaning we are enhancing uh, uh, the site's ability. We are capturing all our senses. We are hijacking them in a sense. So when you look at this right now, look at this. You have to tell yourself, I'm not there. Okay, it's not me over there. Otherwise, you know, you might get, you know, it, it might be too frightening. And this is the opposite of what we usually have to do when we go to the theater. Uh, we call it, when you go to the theater, we, we use the term, it's, it's, uh, it's from psychology, I think, it's a, it's a willingness suspense of disbelief. Meaning, you get, you get to the theater and you have to tell yourself, well, this is a real, you know, you have to put the, your suspense or the, your disbelief, you know, with your cell phone on silent because otherwise you won't enjoy the show. You don't have the time all the time to remind yourself, no, 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 this is not the actor. This is, this is, this is a real person or this is a pistol from the 18th century, but, you know, he's, when he's shooting, you know, he's really dying. Otherwise, you won't enjoy. So when we go to the theater, we have to do willingness suspense of disbelief. Here, in extended reality, we have to do the opposite. We have to suspend the belief. We have to tell ourselves, this is not us there. I want to show you, okay, and what I want to show you now is what, what does it mean and how are we going to use it for good? Unfortunately, around the world, we have many people who, are, who have burns. More than 80% of the body, around 90% is covered with burns, you know, soldiers that were in Afghanistan, unfortunately here and anywhere in the world. These people usually suffer from pain 24 hours a day. If we give them morphium, level of pain is we can we it, it's being reduced for about 20 percent these people from the washington hospital one of the hospitals decided to try something else i'm going to show you what they did and i'm going to explain it afterwards they created this game that this poor guy see you know this you know you see what this is okay this penguin is suffering from uh, the snow balls that is being, you know. What is happening, his, his body is telling him, I'm suffering, it's so hot. But his brain is telling, no, it's cold, I'm freezing. We are capable of decreasing the amount of pain without giving anything, any kind of medication, by 60%. We add to that the morphium, we are getting to 80% decrease in, in this horrible feeling. A decrease in is. pain. Uh, I want to pause here for a second because I want, to, I want to recapitulate what I think you just said here. And I have heard before that um, something like 80% of what we consider real is, is what we gathered from our eyes. Yeah. So what yeah. you're saying is, and, and I found this pretty cool, I, I just learned in your presentation, is that that's stored in that visual cortex there, that even blind people also have that yeah. same neural yeah. activity. Yeah. Yeah. But by exploiting that, we can convince, say, somebody in horrible pain, uh, we can yeah. convince 80% of their brain, no, that's not, you're not in pain because of what you see. Just as because yeah. what you see, it's rather giving them morphine that, that dumbs down the, the sensors, the nerve endings, this just redirects the nerves. That's yeah. wonderful. Oh, that's wonderful. Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm very interested in VR these days uh, for healing um, purposes. And I got to this uh, virtual reality conference, which was online. It was in Cider 
Cider Mountain or something like this. This is, a, this is the largest uh, hospital in, uh, in LA. They did a summit last week. It was an amazing because what they do, they take anything and, and it's, it's, you simply go into people's mind. So for example, people who are obese and they, can't, they don't have a feeling that, you know, that they had enough. They can't feel that. So you see the process that you show them what's happening within their body. Or this woman with the schizophrenia, you know, she's, you know, she has all these multi personalities. With the VR, the, uh, the professor assists her to create this, to create them. All the people who are talking in her head and they can relate to them in therapy. Or people who are suffering from um, any kind of depression. So you I, take I, 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 what this is correlating. I've never heard this before. So thank you so much. If nothing else, this part is worth it. I'm just loving it. But it's reminding me, and I think his name is Andrew Will. He's a doctor who uh, he, he does prescribe medicine for people, but he found that most um, uh, th when he was going to school, he said it yeah. puzzled him the the um, the psychosomatic effect, and people would dismiss it. Oh, well, that's just a placebo. And uh -huh. he said, wait a second. Why yeah, are we it, dismissing it, that? If I can get you to reduce your pain by not taking a pill, if it's a placebo, good enough. So he wanted to cultivate the placebo effect in a good way. And he found that he can get rid of most back pain just through mind, you know, telling people. I can see should, where this would greatly augment this. It's unbelievable. You should go. It's a written, it's called a virtual medicine conference. And the one who is re running it is called Bernan Spiegel. He's an amazing guy. His lecture, I think I saw it already four times. I, what I did, I took out the transcript. I'm simply going to write, you know, learn it like in a, an article. It's amazing. It's, a, it's simply, it's amazing. So I just, um, I just want to show you, okay, I, uh, let's, uh, oh, for example, what we did, okay, just to th last thing, I know we need to finish, but this, it seems that most, the, the both, uh, all of uh, the most sensitive place in our body, is beneath our thumb here. Sorry, I, I'm sorry that I just wanted to explain it. I'm sorry, it, uh, I know. What are you so, sorry about? <laughs> that I took my thumb out. I'm sorry. Oh. <laughs> oh, I did worse earlier in the presentation. I might have spoiled everything. I, I wiped my nose it was, okay. while I was on camera. Okay, you're, making, <laughs> okay, you're making fun of me. It's okay. <laughs> what is interesting is that if we give to blind people to walk around, and you see this is the camera, okay? You see the camera? And it being translated to senses that they can feel beneath their tongue, in a sense they can see. Uh, I don't have it here, in the, but you can go to the website. It, this is called, called Taste Sight. And you can see blind people for the first time in their life see their loved one. That's great. Fantastic. And the last story I'm going to tell you is about uh, a project called Walk Again. When there is, uh, there, is, there, is, there, is, there is another section in the presentation that I explained many things about it. But one thing that I want to say is that they had uh, eight uh, uh, para, how do you call these people who can't walk because, you know, the... Paraplegic, the, paraplegic. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Sorry, I forgot the word. So they decided to use this method. So in the beginning, they gave them VR and they were supposed to train their mind to give order to out, you know, to artificial legs that were out there to walk only with their minds. Then they added them a skeleton, you know, on their body. You know, when you have a skeleton and you can walk with it, it's like this robot. There is this robot that, you know, you give it in Japan to old people. So it's yeah, a system yeah. to yep, walk. Yep, 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 yep. It's like an external shield or whatever. So after that, they started using that. I, I forgot to say, these eight uh, um, um, patients, none of them walked between 10 to 14 years. After eight to 10 months of training, they started gaining the ability to move their heads, their legs. Because the, we were capable using the sites to create new connection in the brain. 
neurological heuristic patterns that that were yeah. not available before. Yeah, that's that's just so one. You know, I never uh, you you brought it to me, and it makes so much sense. But how VR can be used for healing, and it makes so much sense. And and Jama uh, uh, typed in, it is uh, well, Doctor Andrew Will. Yeah, he he's all about uh, psycho. And I can remember when I was a kid, actually, my sister who uh, studied psychology. I had had the hiccups at like five or six years old. Mm -hmm. And uh, my other sister said, oh, you know how to cure that? Count to 10, uh, hold your breath and count to 10. And uh, I said, oh, okay, I'll, I'll do that. And it started working for me. And then my older sister goes, it's psychosomatic. So what does that mean? Whatever you believe works will work, but it doesn't really, that had nothing to do with it. And from then on, I couldn't cure my hiccups by counting to 10 and that bothered me. I want to be able to psychosomatically heal myself. Well, if 80% of what we consider real is what we visually see. You yeah. can really help build that. This is the tool to help psychosomatic healing. Yeah, yeah, and and post traumatic, and we can take all these people, you know, who went to war and came back, you know, they're, they're, or, or, or children that were abused. I mean, there's so many applications. It's it's we just we we are just on the tip, tipping point. I mean, we we just starting. We just you know we're doing baby steps in it. It just yeah, it's. Yeah. it's this blows my mind and, and makes, you know, it's, it's, um, it's unbelievable. So just to finish the story, after 12 to 14 months, all of them are walking again. That's it's fantastic. Walking, it's That's unbelievable. Fantastic. It's not, I have the film somewhere to show it, but it's not here. But anyway, so... I think, uh, I don't know, uh, we got to here. Um, well, I'll tell you what, guys, I'd like to go another 15 minutes. I said we'd go uh, and uh, break till now, but if you don't mind, let's do that another 15 minutes. Let's uh, yeah, go at least till uh, uh, 145, and then we'll break at 145. Oh, and people are liking that too. So okay. Okay, everyone's good. Everyone's good. All right. Great. Okay. okay, so I'm continuing now. Okay. Okay. This is one of my favorite world in the world. <laughs> This is going to the nano, nano, nano. And um, I just read now, I'm reading now a book of uh, Ken Robinson about creativity. But then he's, stuck in, he's saying that he went uh, and he met this professor who is dealing, is dealing with nano because we're creating now things which in the nanometer. So we ask, what does it mean a nanometer? So he said to him, it's a billion part of, of a meter. Can you explain? You can, unbelievable. So he says, can you give me a metaphor? And he says, if you're having a beard, this is the, uh, um, this is the a tempo in which uh, your beard is growing. One billion of a meter in a day. <laughs> it's amazing. We only started understanding what's going down there. There is a wonderful guy, I think his name is, I'll tell you in a second, because I love his lectures. He's an amazing, uh, he's, he's amazing. His name is, I'll show you in a second, Andrew Hessel. He's an expert on nano, anything. But he wants to use nano in, for healing people as well. As you see, I have an issue with healing. So just to give you some implications, that are so important. So uh, I'm sure, folks, first of all, did you hear about, all of you heard about um, uh, 3D printing, right? Everybody know about 3D printing? I think printing? everybody here is probably familiar with 3D printing, right? Where, did you hear about 4D printing? No, I have okay. not heard of 4D printing. Okay, 4D printing meaning, I'm taking this uh, paper, okay? And I'm printing on it in an org origami style, but time is also a parameter. So what I do, and also sometimes water, so I can send it to a, spa a spaceship. And the fact that time is variable, when it gets there and you, or you add water, it can become a part of the engine of the spaceship. That is awesome. I'm Googling it on the side here. I, that is really, really cool. Oh, so, gosh. So what thing, let's say, think about what is going to happen with, well, for example, for the shipment, shipping industry, which is all the economics of, of shipping industry are based on size, right, and weight. And suddenly, if you can, you know, 
4 print everything, 4D printing everything. So, you know, the all economics, who are you going to, you know, calculate it? And sure. when we're talking about the dark side, you know, you can take it and you put it in your pocket and you get, you get on a plane and no one knows what it is until it becomes what it is. So from security, I mean, this is, you know, each technology. So this is very important. You should st start looking and learning about uh, 4D printing. It's going to be huge. We, we, we uh, actually had a nice discussion about uh, the four dimensions of reality. So the way they, I'm reading 3D is that um, we know that the fourth dimension, thanks to Einstein, we, is time. So 4D printing, what I'm reading, is that how the structure you print in 3D will change over time. So, exactly. uh, so it, at the time you get on the airplane, it's uh, a business card, but the time yeah. uh, 15 minutes later, it's whatever. Yeah. Yeah. So obviously now we use the analogy of fire all the time, uh, whether it's okay. AI or anything else. And I like to say, yeah, it can be used for bad stuff. Uh, people, yeah. there are arsonists in this world, but we have more problems with fire just through accidents. So we have uh, both our, our, our accidental and, and deliberate problems. But, you know, even uh, billions of years later, since we discovered fire, it's not perfect. People die every couple of minutes in a fire. But I don't yeah. want to go back to a simpler time. No, 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 never, manage, never, manage never. Yeah. I'm just saying here the you know, it, it's so deceptive. No, it's, it's, this it's element. awesome. Yeah. Yeah, I can see your point. Yeah. Okay. Let's talk about something, another application when we're talking about the nano. You remember I, I have, you know, I have a craving for energy. So what's happening right now, you, we always tell our children to eat, you know, vegetables in five colors, right? Do you know why? This is the way the sun is giving us the building blocks. Okay, so this, the color represents this, you know, um, how long or how short is the wave of the energy. The car, okay, and it's being, it's being expressed like in a color. We are right now in a tipping point when already we know how to get the energy. What happens if we take this energy, all these five colors, it's like the rainbow, and we can give it to people not through the whole process, which is a very long and not very, I would say, it's not very you know, in a way, it's, it's practical because it's the only way we, we ate till now. But what happens if we can grasp the energy, these building blocks, all five of them, all five kinds of them, and for example, have them in a tube, and you just put, pour, pour them in water and you drink it, and you have all the nutrients that you, ha you need, your, you know, the, your body needs. We might get to a point when we are going to get all the energy or all the, all the building blocks for our body directly from the sun and food will be used only for entertainment, for our indulgence. Yeah, you just one, one after another, you're blowing me away. And this correlates it back, you know, I'm, I'm also a student of, uh, uh, of yoga and martial arts and stuff and, 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 and mystics and stuff like that. And, and uh, you know, there's the, the famous, um, or the, the, that we, we have at the highest level of say the, the Buddhist monks or the Taoist monks, that they can live off of sunlight. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. And I here we are, we're, you're saying we're getting to that point. Yeah. So, and again, if we're talking about from a humanistic point of view, think about again the most sunny, the sunniest continent. The of poorest countries. countries are the sunniest, yeah. so they might be yeah. turning around. It might be a huge shift. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Fantastic! Wow, wow. Should they continue? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We got a couple more minutes. Okay, okay, great. Okay, so I'm just gonna speak now about. Um, okay, forget about that. Okay, uh, I won't talk about. But I want to talk now, and this is, uh, now I'm quoting one of my teacher. I love my teacher, so I keep telling who they are. Uh, her name is Tiffany Vera, and she is also a teacher in uh, Singularity. She's an amazing, she has wonderful, wonderful podcast, and she's writing. You should look her up, Tiffany Vera. She's an amazing lady. I'm going to type it out for the group. Uh, it's yeah. Tiffany. Uh, Tiffany Vera. Tiffany Vera. How do you spell the last uh, name? Vera, V-E-R-A. I'm just gonna, 
Uh, just a second, I was supposed to get on another conversation. I'm gonna tell him, no, no, it's okay, no worries. Uh, so, okay, great, no worries, it's okay. It's uh, working. So what he's talking about is that, well, you guys all know about CRISPR, right? I do. You guys are familiar with the uh, the gene editing software CRISPR? Anybody else? Not so much. Yeah, we got no. No, I got a no here. Monica's not familiar. Okay. Uh, yeah, not so much. It's it actually I've been showing my daughter. You know, because they they have these technology where you could take it home, and people were doing gene editing at home. The the uh, just to quick introduce it to the to the group. What on the, the, the most powerful uh, immediate application is they've been able to look at defects in the womb, edit the defect, and now the kid uh, doesn't have this particular disease. And that is just so wonderful. Will we also get to the point where um, we, we look at these are the best types of eyes to have. This is the best type of ear DNA. You, so edit the gene. So the kid comes out not just fixing a problem that they had, but can we give them abilities that they wouldn't normally have had? And that's uh, some interesting stuff. Can I just tell, it's a funny story, how we got to this CRISPR case line. Um, yeah, yeah. There was this company. It was a yogurt company. It's a true story. And um, all the time, you know, the cups of yogurt, you know, continued to, you know, I don't know, to rotten and, and they couldn't sell it. It's, it, you know, and, and it was, you know, a huge uh, financial damage. So uh, the owner of the company, you know, he, he, he looked around, he found in the university some, uh, some uh, researcher and says, can you find a solution? What's going on? So they started looking at the, this uh, cups of, of yogurt and they found something very interesting that at about half of them they found bacteria, and on the other half they found viruses. But they never found not even one cup with both bacteria and viruses. They were amazed. They asked themselves, how come? What's going on? And I don't know how, how well you know bacteria, but because of uh, Excel, I fell in love with bacteria. They are enormous. Anyway, one of the things they do, and this is how we got it, whenever a virus is getting close to them, they cut, they created the scissors, biological scissors, and they cut his DNA and they add it to themselves. They are making themselves immune. To any kind of virus. Amazing, huh? That is incredible. So then the people, you know, you know, they had friends. Can we use it in human? So this is how the whole process started. Amazing, isn't it? It's, it's unbelievable. It's What's cut and on? paste, right? Everybody here is familiar yeah, with yeah, cut yeah, and paste. Everything. You do it, you do you it for You can do whatever you want. You can add, it's like, simple, like it's today going to be simple as editing uh, your Word, pro, Word document. The same, the same. This is, this is uh, the more interesting part right now is we're gonna build it from scratch. This is one thing. And you know, we only have four letters in our genome. And um, I don't know whether you know, but DARPA- A, T, G, and N. We have only, four, yeah. And yeah, you know A, T, DARPA, G, and N. Yeah. yeah, and you know DARPA added two letters lately, a month ago. I, I was just going to see if you, I was going to ask you, um, one of our members there pr posted a great article on it, Brendan. Brendan's yeah. very active, but did a, an article. Yeah. Yep. yeah, 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 yeah. So now we so can create animals or DNA uh, organisms that never existed before. Yeah. So instead yeah. of a, well, yeah. every other animal that we know, every life, every plant is made up of four uh, molecule types, but now yeah. we have two more. Yeah. yeah, but what is interesting regarding this CRISPR right now, what we can do, you know, most of the malaria is because of the mosquitoes. So if we CRISPR uh, mosquitoes in a certain area, like in Australia, they did it. In nine generations of mosquitoes, which is one year, you eliminate all the mosquitoes. You know, and, and that's the thing they talk about. It's great to how to sterilize them or whatever. But I wondered if we couldn't use it to actually as a delivery mechanism. Can we change mosquitoes from harmful things to ways yeah. to deliver, yeah. you know, yeah. good things? Yep. Yeah. And this is what Tiffany varies. She says, you know, there is going to be an input and output, and then you get, you're going to get your goal. doesn't matter what it is. And then she, she is a biologist, and she loved the sea. 
So she has this idea she's playing with. She says, well, this is how, you know, our, if you go down to the bottom of the ocean, this is how it looks now, right? With all the plastics, right? Disgusting, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, sorry, it's disgusting. She says, and these are the molecules, right? What if we do CRISPR editing to the fish? So and they can we, digest the plastic. Exactly. And break it up. Yep. Yeah, it's, I, I've seen some things on this and it's awesome. Really, really awesome. Really? What a wonderful um, work. Yeah. And like fire, it won't be perfect. When people look at you know, new technologies, they always go, oh, but what if it goes wrong? And we should. Yeah. That's our job in our class here. We're security yeah. people. Our job is to do that. But yeah. we don't go, well, then we shouldn't do it. We go, yeah. let's reduce the risks of doing this. Yeah. And what she says is that we are going, oh, this is the, the mosquitoes. So she only has, we all, all the time she, we say, she says, we have to ask, can we do it? Should we do it? Is it legal? Yeah. Well, laws yeah. will evolve with us, you know, and that's one of the things we, we have a code of ethics in our class, Yali, that my students get tested on. And the primary mm -hmm. ethic is to protect everyone first. Laws are secondary. So I always say, you know, uh, uh, slavery in the United States was legal. But that what yeah. that didn't protect everybody. So no, yeah, I I'm with you. Yeah, I'm with you totally. Yeah, yeah. That's fantastic. Uh, we we really need to break. But uh, Yali, I I I think you had more, didn't you? Didn't you have? Was it? Yeah. Uh, how, of course. We I only. Have, I hope. Please tell me you'll come back, and I'm in a, a lot more time. I'll be delighted. Of course. Oh, why not? this has been wonderful, guys. Uh, any questions for Yali? Christina says thank you so much. It was fascinating. Thank you. It's a pleasure. It was my pleasure. You, all, you know, Peter always says we are all just uh, sitting or standing on, on giant uh, um, shoulders and it's our privilege, honor and duty to spread all the knowledge and share it. This is, I mean, Peter and our other teachers are extremely generous with us. And our role is to be generous with others. This is Knowledge is, is being built in order to be shared. Otherwise, it's, it's worthless. This is how I look at it. So it's been my honor, and I want to thank you for being here and willing to sustain me and you know, listen. Thank you so thank much. You so thank much. you so much. I, I, um, uh, I, I do a, uh, an exercise. Uh, one of my exercises every morning is I plank and uh, for about two minutes, and it takes me about eight deep breaths. And on each deep breath, I have a little mantra where I, I say I'm grateful for this, that, or the other thing. And one of the things I'm always grateful for is uh, the abundance group and, and, and Peter yeah. uh, sharing all this yeah. stuff because it just – you know, when you, when you watch the news, it, you'd think the world is getting worse all the time. You'd think no, it's no, no, way no. more dangerous, yeah. but it's yeah, not. Yeah, they're playing with the amygdala. They're playing with the amygdala. They're, they're, they're manipulating you for sales yeah. purposes so they can yeah. capture yeah. your attention. Yeah. Fantastic. Is there a website? Um, because we were looking for a website, couldn't find anything. So is there a place we can go to find out more about uh, the work that you're doing? I'm sorry, I didn't hear. I'm sorry. I, I, is there a website for, for more of... Um, well, for the abundance stuff, go to, and here I am, at Abundance uh, Community, and um, this, is, this is the oh, guy. Yeah, and also now. there is, in Singularity, there is also, I think, every, every, every week there is, uh, I think they, they also have a web, web, but also MIT. You should know MIT have four or five letters which are being rolled out. Uh, it's free of charge every day. They are excellent. MIT, you just go and there is one, on, there is one general one and there is one in, on um, transportation, one on, uh, sorry, blockchain. Um, and there is the fourth one, I don't recall right now, but there are ah, on AI, of course. So, uh, and all, what's going on in the, and also I would go to, um, there is a very interesting, uh, another one, which is uh, the Center for the Edge. Uh, which is being run by uh, John Hagel, and they are dealing with social issues. Um, yep. And I would go and look for Singularity University f um, um, Summit on YouTube. I was just and typing it in. As you're beating me to great. it. Wonderful. So, yeah, they are very good. They and and wonderful lectures over there. And uh, it's actually how I go to sleep each night. I, <laughs> I generally uh, pull up some uh s u talk and and yeah. um enjoy myself and sometimes I fall asleep to it but um yeah 
the, you know, uh, uh, this to, to tie it up, one of the things that Peter always talks about is convergence. So yeah. uh, Yali presented some incredibly wonderful things going on with nanotechnology, with AI, with uh, three and four D uh, printing, um, with with uh, a gene editing. Now mix these together. How will <laughs> AI assist gene editing using four D printing? And it's just an exponential effect there. So uh, as you said, the, the world of, of 2030 is just going to be so different, so different. And yeah. our job here is to secure it. So our, uh, we're, I don't know if you're familiar with the certification that I'm teaching here, but it's, the, uh, it's an international standard. It's the Certified Information System Security Profession. Mm -hmm. Wow. All wow. U.S. military people, if you have top secret wow. clearance to touch wow. any data, wow. you have to have a cert like this. And uh, wow. we have people from as far away as uh, uh, India in the class right now. So it's respected wow. all over the world. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. Oh, so thank you. you. It's been a Great an time. honor. Thank all you. right, guys. Let's uh, take, um, thank you. Let's take thank a 10-minute break and yeah. we'll come back and resume. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Bye-bye.